بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه من ولا أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ويل للمطففين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي وجعل لي وزيرا من أهلي آمين يا رب العالمين So the topic for today's khutbah is Musa alayhi salam in masjid and Fir'aun in business or Fir'aun at work. And you might have encounter within yourself or within Muslim community this hypocrisy or this two-faced attitude. Whether you are in your family, in your community, people are trying to be or pretending to be righteous. But at the same time, if you will deal with them financially, whether they are employee or employer, whether they are buyer or seller, this monster comes out immediately. They are different individual altogether. Sometimes you'll be surprised. Are you the same guy you saw in the masjid? <laughs> Who will have always a smile on their face and now you're always argumentative on the small, small amount on penny or more. And inshallah, in this brief khutbah, I'm going to mention five things if we will have time inshallah about the business ethics not the legal principle, we all know riba is haram, interest is haram, but business ethics as told by Rasulullah You don't need to learn fiqh of financial transactions for this, that's a separate academic course. But for learning basics, ethics and morality about how you do business, how you work, how you have to indulge yourself, whether as an employee or employer, inshallah today we're going to discuss that. If we will have time, I'll follow five of those inshallah. Growing up in a uh, uh, Muslim community in Houston, almost in 2008, I started working doing odd jobs like a delivery boy of candy store. Um, and, uh, and I was part of the youth group in Masjid there back in the days. So I used to do odd jobs and I, we would discuss with our friends in youth groups and I would discuss this argument with uncle. And some, some of them will let's say, oh, don't work for Muslim owners. They would never pay you on time. And then when the time came when you have some money and you start thinking, okay, let's do partnership with Muslim, Muslim investors, some of them will say, never, never do this with Muslim businessmen. They were going to deceive, they were going to cheat. If you are working, for, if you're working for Muslim owners, they would never pay your salary on time. And this is the based on one or two bad experience. Now, generalization is not a good idea. Stereotyping is never a good idea. But yet there are few bad experiences which people have, unfortunately. And which is surprising because if we are really followers of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we know that he was called as sadiq and Al-Ameen even before he announced his prophethood. Even before he told us how to pray, how to fast, how to worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And as sadiq for those of you who don't know as sadiq means, the honest and the most trustworthy one. Why he, he was called with these titles is because he was a trader, he was a businessman. Whenever you would buy something from him, he would say, this is the aib, this is a flaw in this product. If you want to buy it, just go ahead. He was honest businessman. Why, why Islam is spread like in, in Indonesia and Malaysia? It's because the Muslim traders, the Muslim businessmen went there. So this is something really important, especially when you are ambassadors of Islam in a country like U.S. So let's talk about those basic business ethics, which is told by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so that we can balance our life inshallah ta'ala. Because again, Islam is not only about fasting and praying, even though that's very important. And without it, our Jannah will have a big question mark. But there is other aspect which we cannot ignore. And that is our financial dealings with the people. So let's do point number one, which we have to make sure and pay attention. Uh, in terms of ethics of the business, ethics of the job, ethics of the work, be transparent in your transactions. Be transparent in your transaction. No deception, no deceiving. There is beautiful hadith, and up for every point, I will mention at least one hadith, inshallah ta'ala. That once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi this mentioned in Sahih Muslim, all the hadith are Sahih, which I'll mention. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was walking in the streets of Medina and he saw a seller. Selling one in one narration, it says that he was selling corn. In other narration, it says that he was selling dates. So Rasulullah put his hands in the bucket. He had a bucket where he was selling. 
and he saw in the beneath of his bucket there's some wetness which is not a good sign when you're selling a product so on the in the top he have good dates and at the bottom he have bad dates he asked that salesman what's this why you have put the bad dates at the bottom so that people cannot see and people can give you order and then you can basically give good dates and bad dates both and then rasulullah said this which we all know rasulullah says Man ghasha falaysa minni. those who cheat they are not from us they don't have any reconciliation any any recognition any uh, affiliation with me those who cheat basically those who cheat in their business this is one thing which we are learning in our time subhanallah people cheat in their business they deceive in their business how you will get barakah in your wealth one of the scholar imam 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 uh, razi rahimahullah he used to say that if you want to reduce the barakah in your wealth you need to do only one thing and that is only cheat and deceive in your business or in your job even if you will earn more there will be no barakah May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the ability to be transparent. I mean, Ya Rab. If you have a product while you're selling a small or big things, car, houses, or even a small things, tell the customer that this is the problem. And if you want to buy, you can buy it. Second thing, which we have to make sure you have to do to have an ethical business transaction. Be honest. Never lie in your job or in your business. Be honest. I know it's hard sometimes when I was working for for Old Navy for three, four months. So we used to hear this a lot from Muslim and non-Muslim friends. Oh, you can never be honest in today's market. You have to be deceiving. You have to be clever. You have to be this. You have to be that. You have to be honest because we are followers of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I'll just tell you this hadith, subhanAllah. Rasulullah says in Sahih Bukhari, فَإِن صَدَقَا وَبَيَّنَا بُورِكَ لَهُمَا فِي بَيْعِهِمَا Rasulullah Sallallahu says if both the parties, the buyers and the sellers, the employee or the employer if they are honest and if they will clarify each and everything in their transaction Allah will bless that wealth which they will be gathering and then Rasulullah says وَإِن كَتَمَا وَكَذَبَا and if you lie in your business transaction as a buyer or as a seller, as an employee or as an employer, if you lie, if you deceive other person, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala muhiqat baraka. Allah will reduce the baraka from it or eliminate the baraka from it. And you know what is baraka in this context, right? Even if you will earn twenty thousand dollar more by cheating, by deceiving, you know what will happen if you don't have baraka? That will be taken away from you like a blink of an eye. Maybe medical expense will come. Maybe childcare expense will come. Something will happen. And if you will earn $1,000 with honesty, Allah will give so much barakah, it will be much more in terms of bigger than impact than $20,000. You know, some people open their business and they would ask uh, Imam Mawlana Sheikh Mufti Hafiz, come and recite Surah Al-Baqarah so that I can have barakah. Recite Surah Yaseen so that I can have barakah. If you can start only acting on those surah, you will have barakah. If you can start acting on the ethical principles which Islam is telling us, Wallah, you will get barakah. You don't need a Sheikh or Hafiz or a Mufti to come and recite like, like a magical wand and everything will be full of barakah. This is start being ethical in your business practices, inshallah. Third thing. Third ethical principle which we are learning. Be considerate when you are in financial transaction. Consider the feelings of the other person involved. Whether as a buyer you are selling something or you are a seller, you are selling a product to the buyer. Whether as an employer or employee, be considerate of the feelings of each other. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all considerate. Ameen Ya Rabbi. This hadith is also mentioned in Bukhari and Muslim. It says about being considerate of each other. Rahimallahu rajulan samhan iza ba'a wa iza iqta iza ishtara wa iza iqtada. Rasulullah said, May Allah have mercy on that buyer 
May Allah have mercy on that seller. May Allah have mercy on that employee. May Allah have mercy on that employer who is kind hearted, who is generous, who is easy going, who is lenient in his purchase, in his buying, in his selling, in his work. Whenever he buys something, whenever he sells something, whenever he demands the repayment of his loans, he's easy going, he's samhan, he's lenient, he's generous. He don't want to squeeze the other customer completely. He will be deserving of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, when we say the art of deal, <laughs> in modern day terms, the art of deal, oh, I had a great deal, means you squeeze the other person completely. You didn't even let him earn a single dollar, even though you had million of dollars in your account. This is what we say art of deal. For a Muslim, an Islamic version of the art of deal will be that you are happy and other person will be happy from your transaction. You don't need to squeeze the other person completely. He have family also. He have his expenses also. He's not running a non-profit organization. He have to earn some profit from you also, which is completely fine. Let him earn. And not say be naive and let people exploit you. But let other person earn. That's what transaction means. Be considerate. You know, actually, one of the famous uh, hadith about, uh, one of the other famous hadith in Sahih Bukhari about being considerate of the feeling of other person in terms of your financial transaction is where there was a big, gigantic businessman. And Rasulullah actually narrates this. He says, Kana tajir and nas. There was a big businessman, big tajir, and he used to lend, he used to give loan to money. He found out one day that one of his, one of the person who was the debtor, he could not pay back the loan because a affliction hit him. In our times, you know what people will do if you find out that your money is not coming back. And because of affliction, because of genuine reason, that person, that businessman said to his employees, forgive him. Perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive us by doing this. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said on this, Allah actually forgave him for doing this great act. Be considerate of other people. Yes, don't be naive. Again, I'm saying don't be naive. Don't let other people exploit. Don't let other people financially abuse you. But at the same time, if you're not on the far left in the extreme, you don't have to go to far right also. Stay in the middle. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us considerate. Ameen Ya Rabbi. SubhanAllah, only four minutes left. I'll just inshallah rush it for these two points inshallah. So the first point was be transparent. Second, be honest. Third, be considerate. And all of this is regarding your work, your job, your business transactions, your financial transactions. Fourth, and I know this is very difficult for modern day Muslims. Try to be less argumentative in your business. <laughs> when we are in masjid, oh, we are so smiling, mashallah. But now you will see this person in a business. He's always argumentative, always disputing, always fighting on a small, small, single penny. Be an easy go, easygoing person. There's a beautiful, beautiful incident happened in the life of Rasulullah. This hadith is mentioned in Ibn Majah, Sahih hadith. There was a companion named Sa'ib. His name was? Sa'ib. He accepted Islam after almost 20 years of the announcement of prophethood, almost near Fath Makkah. Remember this. Sa'ib, back in the days, was a business partner with whom? With Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Before even he announced his prophethood, so Sa'ib and Rasulullah used to be a business partner. When Saib came after 20 years, when you are a business partner, you know about your business partner, right? Everything. You know his character. Like Umar ibn Khattab said, if you want to know the character of someone, have a, do business with him. Know, see his financial dealings. So Saib took 20 years, then he came, and then he said this to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, and the Saib qala li Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, kunta shariki fil jahiliya. Saib said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that, O oh Prophet, you were my partner in the time of ignorance, in the time of Jahiliyyah. 
فَكُنْتَ خَيْرَ شَرِيكٍ And you were best of the business partners I had ever. كُنْتَ لَا تُدَارِينِ وَكُنْتَ لَا تُمَارِينِ You never fight with me for small, small things in business. You never disputed with me and you never cheated with me for small, small things. I believe in Islam now. Subhanallah. This is the right hadith in Ibn Majah. This Actions speak louder than your words. I can give a speech on fiqh of finance all day I long. All day I want. But if I will going to indulge myself in financial transaction and if I'm not practicing this, I will expose myself. Rasulullah was a businessman, was a human being, and then he He lived within those people. He had a great character. He had an influence. And then people accepted because whatever this guy says. It must be true. Last thing before we can end is paying the salary if you are an employer, paying the compensation on time. This is also business ethics. Even if you are doing a partnership, paying the profit on time. There's a hadith in Sayyid Bukhari, and this is a very scary hadith. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. Ameen, Ya Rab. Rasulullah says, Inna Allah thalatha ana khasmuhum yawm al qiyamah. There are three groups of people. I will be against them in the day of judgment. There are three group of people. I will be. Allah says in the Hadith Qudsi, I will be against those three group of people. May Allah protect us. Amin ya Rabb. One of them will be rajulun istajar ajiran fastawfa min walam yati ajrahu. That when a person hires an employee to work for him, he works for him, the work is done, and he doesn't pay him completely on time. Allah says, I will be against that person. Why did he, did he, he didn't do that? SubhanAllah. And we all know the famous hadith, I will end inshallah because time is done. In, in Ibn Majah, where Rasulullah sallallahu says, Atul ajira ajrahu qabla in yajifa araku. You have to pay. The employee his salary before his sweat dries. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring transparency and honesty in our business transactions, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be a righteous, pious Muslim ambassador in this country, inshallah, so that people, non Muslims, and they see our business dealings and transactions, they will accept Islam before even we will uh, expose them to Quran and Sunnah just by looking at our akhlaq and our character, inshallah ta'ala. Ameen, Ya Rabbi. Please make dua for the entire ummah, especially for our brothers and sisters in Palestine. Allahumma ansuri al-Islam wa al-Muslimina fi Palestine wa fi kulli makan. Allahumma inna nas'aluka ilman nafi'a wa amalan saliha wa imanan kamila wa yaqeenan sadiqa wa rizqan wasi'a wa rizqan wasi'a wa rizqan halalan tayyiba wa rizqan wasi'a sahlan wa tawbatan nasuha wa tawbatan qabla al-mawt wa rahatan inda al-mawt wa l'afa inda al-hisab wa al-fawza bil-janna wa al-najata min al-nar bi rahmatika ya azizu ya ghafar اللهم لا تدع لنا ذنبا إلا غفرت ولا هما إلا فرجت ولا دينا إلا قضيت ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخر إلا قضيتها يا أرحم الراحمين ولا مريضا إلا شفيت ولا ميتا إلا رحمت ولا ضالا إلا هديت يا أرحم الراحمين الله أكبر